Welcome everyone back to weekly weather updates and in today's video we're going to have another look at what is going on up in the stratosphere. Of course, about a week or two ago, we did an update looking at the risk of a sudden stratospheric warming occurring again in the early to middle part of February. And that is now looking pretty likely. We are going to be seeing those zonal mean winds reverse high up in the stratosphere within the next seven to ten days, barring any major changes within the models. Of course, what will be the implications of that through the rest of February and into spring? It's difficult to say exactly what happened because every sudden stratospheric warming is different, but it definitely does increase the chances of more prolonged block blocking, more pronounced blocking, and of course, with that, colder weather and even the risk of winchiness, uh, potentially even into March and April, could prolong the risk of snow, frosts, and just generally a pretty cold feel. Even if we don't see anything bitterly cold, you know, even if we don't see a beast from the east, something like that, which is on the very extreme end, there is quite a high chance that it does prolong, as I said, colder patterns, easterly flows, northerly flows, keeping us chilly, and not allowing any early spring warmth, which I'm sure a lot of people uh, will be looking forward to. So if we do a start by have a look at the latest GFS, we'll run through this and you'll be able to see the major warming that will be occurring in the near future. Already, you can see warming is occurring over towards Russia, but right over the North Pole, we've got this big blue blob, which is the stratospheric polar vortex, still relatively strong with relative cohesion as well. But over the coming days, we are going to see it get strained and slowly displaced towards Europe. Now, that's not going to have any direct impacts. Remember, this is way up in the stratosphere. But what it will do is allow that warming to get into the North Pole. And this is where we get the major sudden stratospheric warming. It's around week it's time, eight, nine days time, perhaps we see the major warming penetrate right into the Arctic, which is just, uh, and, and right over the North Pole, which is just to north of Svalbard there, uh, and we can see the uh, the polar vortex gets displaced uh, initially, and we could even see a split in the polar vortex. You can see it getting really stretched out there in around 10 days' time, and this is where we officially reach that major sudden stratospheric warming level. If you have a look at the winds high up in the stratosphere, you can see they're so elongated out, and you can see the winds do reverse from a westerly to an easterly at the North Pole. You can see, though, look at that, two lobes of, tropospheric polar uh, of sorry, stratospheric polar vortex. Now, it doesn't look like a clean cut split here, but definitely a split could occur in the medium to longer range uh, when, the, uh, when the warming does occur. That is still something that's a little bit in the balance, whether it be a displacement event or whether we could see a bit of a split. I'm not saying any you know major pronounced split here, but definitely rumblings of a bit of a split uh, before it does sort of kind of... Uh, kind of try and join back up into the longer range. But one thing we are seeing, even right towards the end of February, is the polar vortex is pretty obliterated. So it's not like we're going to see any recovering. Of course, I said uh, at the start of the video, this is our second SSW, because we did see one in early January. But the polar vortex bounced back very quickly, and those easterly zonal mean winds uh, high up in the atmosphere did only stay in that easterly phase for about a day or two for very quickly returning to average westerly. So that warming came in, but very quickly the polar vortex did recover. But here, because it's later in the uh, winter, getting towards early spring when the polar vortex is weakening naturally, uh, as we do of course head towards summer over the North Pole, it, is, uh, it isn't going to rebound anywhere near as quickly and may not rebound at all. Uh, we are seeing from that, especially from some of the ECMWF ensembles, which I'll show you in the second half of the video. Now, if you go over and have a look at the GFS uh, ensembles here, this is showing the, uh, on a line chart, uh, the green here, showing the GFS members over the course of the next couple of weeks. You can see a big big decrease in those zonal mean winds and the majority are getting down to zero or below. Some staying slightly above zero, but you can see most are into single digits uh, for the zonal mean winds uh, and I said most getting towards zero or well below zero, which is sudden stratospheric warming levels. You can see last year where she saw warming at a very 
very similar time. Remember what happened in March last year, we saw lots of colder patterns and heavy snow. Uh, we saw that major snow event across parts of northern England where we saw a bit of a, we saw almost a foot of snow in places, amber warnings. And again, it's not it will not play out exactly like that because I said no sudden stress, very warming and its implications are the same. But it just shows you that that's the sort of time frame we could be looking at for a response into parts of early March, maybe mid-March, uh, maybe even earlier if, if we do see a bit of a split. You can see, though, if we follow the blue, we did see a warming back in early to middle January. But you saw it rebounded really, really quickly. But pretty abnormal signal here for two uh, reversals of those zonal mean winds. It's difficult to say exactly what will happen beyond this, uh, as the GFS has a lot of spread, some recover back towards the black line, which is average, others stay very weak uh, and keep us in a reversal. But you can see naturally we do see that black line reverse to, a, uh, reverse to an easterly, normally around the middle of April, that's when we see the polar vortex completely get demolished. So it is expected to weaken this time of year, but it's to be a more of a gradual decline before it does reverse in April. So about two months early, and from some of the sides of these models, it might not fully recover at all uh, throughout the rest of winter into early spring. And that can have further pronounced effects, as not only would it just be a simple shock to the system with a major sun stress very warming, but it would be a prolonging of that easterly flow up in the uh, up in the stratosphere and perhaps could prolong any propagation through the atmosphere of higher pressure and blocking for longer periods of time. So it is going to be one of those, we're just going to have to keep a very close eye on it. Now if you look at uh, this chart now, which is a slice through the atmosphere of the GFS operational run, again we've looked at the GFS operational run uh, on sort of the North Pole view, this is showing a slice right uh, to the north of Svalbard, right on the North Pole, uh, and again it is showing the different pressure levels on the y-axis and the time on the x-axis, and the further up you go in the atmosphere, about 30 HPA and above, that's where we're starting to get into the stratosphere, down towards 1000 HPA, that's getting towards the surface. As you can see, right now, we've got pretty strong uh, westerly winds high up in the atmosphere. And you can see on the right chart, that's the anomaly. So it's actually slightly stronger than average. But look at the pronounced effect about in about a week to 10 days time. Massive reversal of those winds. You can see the majority of the time, the GFS, latest GFS runs has in an easterly phase. As you can see, that zero line does move in. And you see on the right, the anomaly is minus 40, maybe as low as minus 50 or even minus 55 at times, which is ridiculous. Again, it's unlikely to be that weak. Maybe the GFS are being a little bit optimistic here, but definitely showing uh, showing a very strong signal that a major reversal was coming and perhaps a major reversal for a long period of time. A prolonged spell of easterly winds high up in the atmosphere, maybe even all the way towards mid-April when we are climatologically meant to be in that easterly phase. The last thing I did want to have a look at is just this chart here, which is not a particularly complicated chart, but on the y-axis is showing the uh, zonal mean winds high up in the stratosphere over the North Pole, and on the x-axis is showing the timeline. Now, the four different lines here are the past four GFS midnight runs. So it's not all the GFS runs, just the midnight run. And you can see the past four, three out of four of them, have got down to major southern stratospheric warming levels. The one that hasn't is the most recent midnight run, and you can see it gets down to about one or two meters per second. So it doesn't quite reach it, but it's near enough there or thereabouts. So you can see the consistency we've had over a number of days is why I'm relatively or oh, very confident really that this is going to occur. Now, finally, if we have a look at the ECMWF, just to check, it's not the GFS being the GFS, you can see that we've got a major warming starting to occur. Uh, these are normally charts, remember, so uh, this darker red doesn't mean it's going to be that warm up in the stratosphere, but it's going to be a lot warmer than what it should be. And we can whiz through this pretty quickly because, as expected, darker reds over the North Pole all the way to the end of the run towards the end of March. Yes, not quite as strong an anomaly, and that's probably because we've got uh, some cooler runs starting to appear in the extended range. But nevertheless, a positive anomaly in terms of those temperatures for the next six weeks, giving the indication that this is going to be a major warming, but it's also going to be very prolonged as well.
Now, finally, if we look at the ECMWF ensembles in the line, ch uh, line chart format, it's very similar to what we saw from the GFS, but this is longer range, so it goes to about six weeks out, uh, and it's a little bit more zoomed in, so it's a little bit easier to see what it is showing. So just over the next few days, we're going to be above average, but in around a week's time, we're going to see those winds plummet, uh, and the majority do get us to uh, major sun's just for a warming level, well below zero there. Not all, uh, I must stress maybe about a quarter uh, to a third, don't quite get us there, so it is plausible, but the majority are down towards zero or below zero. And you can see the thick black, uh, the thick blue line, sorry, that is the ensemble mean, and you can see that goes negative down towards minus four meters per second, so easterly, and you can see even in the longer range, it stays incredibly weak all the way to the end of March, which gives again that indication that this is going to be a major warming, but it's also going to be very prolonged. Very interestingly, there's a handful of runs, maybe five to ten, out of this whole ensemble spread that go average or above, which is pretty ridiculous indeed, and would suggest that this could have a profound impact on the stratosphere, which from everything we know could have a profound impact on the troposphere over the next month or two. So this could be quite a major driver of the weather patterns in the next sort of two to six weeks. We will just have to see how it does develop. But already, if you have stayed tuned to the past few videos, we have seen some pretty interesting blocking patterns, easterly winds developing on some runs. And it all could be some of these operational runs starting to catch on to this major warming occurring. Uh, and of course, as we'll see in tomorrow's video, still seeing some quite substantial blocking signals from the weekly anomalies which i suspect could get even stronger in the coming days and coming weeks with this ssw this major ssw about to occur so anyway thanks for watching hope you have enjoyed may have another update out in around a week or so but it will be dependent on if we do see any major changes but if you are looking for colder weather if you want cold weather to prolong into spring then this is a good sign but if you want that first of march to come and things to be turning sunnier drier and maybe even warmer then this is not a good sign at all some of the coldest springs we've had are from uh, february southern stratospheric warmings so as i said no warming is the same but not good signs if you wanted something warmer in that first half of spring doesn't rule it out but definitely would make it a little bit less likely than if we saw uh, no sun stratospheric warming at this stage. So as I said, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Subscribe if you're new, and I'll see you again for another video soon.